So I posted this picture recently on Instagram, and what it shows is a comparison of the size of two historical ships. The smaller ship at the bottom is Christopher Columbus's Santa Maria. The second, which towers over the Santa Maria, is the treasure ship of the Chinese explorer Zheng He. Now, the picture elicited a lot of reactions and questions about it, and candidly, there was some controversy over the validity of the comparison and the size of the treasure ship in question. So in this video, we're going to share a bit more about the Chinese explorer's life and dive into the debate of how accurate the dimensions of his fleet would have been. Quick disclaimer, I found a number of different ways to pronounce this man's name. Feel free to correct me in comments, but for the sake of the video, we're going to pronounce his name as Cheng He. Any man who commanded a fleet so massive it makes Christopher Columbus look like the captain of a rowboat was bound to have led an interesting life, and Zheng He's story does not disappoint. The future explorer was born to a Muslim family in the Yunnan province of China during the early days of the Ming Dynasty. At age 10, Zheng He was captured, castrated, and forced to become a servant for the Prince of Yan. He developed into a trusted advisor to the prince, who eventually became the third emperor of the Ming Dynasty, known as the Yongle Emperor in 1402. Zheng He played a crucial role in the military campaign that led to the prince's elevation to emperor, and he was rewarded with the post of chief envoy, a position you can think of like the admiral of the Chinese navy. In 1405, Zheng He was ordered by the emperor to oversee the first of seven naval expeditions. Over the next 28 years, he and his fleet sailed through the seas of Asia, India, the Middle East, and Africa. Unlike the voyages of Columbus some decades later, the travels of Zheng He were not so much about exploration as they were diplomatic missions. His voyages were mainly about projecting the power of the Ming Dynasty, and the Yongle Emperor specifically, to all of China's neighbors throughout Asia. While the first two Ming emperors had been isolationists, Yongle sought to change this policy. In particular, he wanted to use Zheng He to re-establish ancient trade routes and revive the practice of collecting tribute from outside the empire. There are dozens of entertaining and fascinating stories recorded from the Seven Voyages. Over the course of his travel, Zheng He engaged in diplomacy, collected tribute, and even cleared out bands of pirates from key trade routes. One of my personal favorite stories came from his fourth expedition. At one stop near Bengal, Zheng He collected tribute from envoys from Malindi, which is in present-day Kenya. Their gifts to the emperor included exotic animals, and in particular, giraffe. The giraffe was carried on board the ship for the rest of the voyage and eventually brought home to the emperor. The emperor saw the animal and believed it to be a creature from Chinese mythology called a Qi Lin. Qi Lin is basically like a Chinese unicorn. The voyages led by Cheng He included a massive fleet of 317 ships, including 62 called Bao Xuan, which literally means gem ship. This is one of those giant treasure ships that can be seen in the model overshadowing Columbus's Santa Maria. So how big exactly were Cheng He's treasure ships? And well, this is where things can get a little bit complicated. The official Chinese sources for Cheng He's voyages record the treasure ships in his fleet to have been over 447 feet long by 183 feet wide. For context, a ship this size would have had half the volume of a modern aircraft carrier. In fact, the Western world would not have built a ship comparable in length until the 19th century when steamers with iron holes were constructed. The Bao Xuan would have been made entirely of wood. So going back to the Columbus comparison, the Santa Maria was about 70 feet in length. This means you could have lined up six replicas of Columbus's flagship bowed astern and still found them falling short of Cheng Ho's treasure vessels. In fact, I read in one place that if the treasure ships were indeed the reported size, then all of the ships sailed by Columbus and Vasco da Gama combined would have been able to sit on a single deck of a single Baoshuan. However, there are of course reasons to be skeptical of these dimensions given. For one thing, the sources that recount the size of Cheng He's fleet are not contemporary. After he died sometime during his seventh voyage, the Ming Emperor who had succeeded the Yongle Emperor returned to his previous policy of isolationism and stopped the expensive voyages. Confucian ministers who distrusted eunuchs, like Cheng He, destroyed most of the writings that described the expeditions. It took hundreds of years before the details of Cheng He and his fleet were recorded in the official history of the Ming Dynasty in the 18th century. Second reason to be skeptical of the dimensions is the symbolism of the numbers recorded. Most scholars see it as no coincidence that the length given in Chinese measurements is 444 qi, as the number 4 is a significant symbol in Chinese numerology. Finally, basic physics seems to undermine the recorded size of the treasure ships. Modern shipbuilding experts widely agree that a ship over 400 feet in length and built entirely of wood simply could not handle the flex caused by passing over waves. 
This is supported by the fact that in the 19th century, the British built two frigates, HMS Orlando and Mercy, that reached 336 feet in length. At the time, these ships were the largest wooden ships ever confirmed to have been built, and both ships were scrapped soon after their first voyages due to the strain of their length. If the Ming Dynasty had not only built ships 40% larger than these frigates, but also had managed to sail them for thousands of miles across the open ocean, then the achievement in naval engineering would simply be unprecedented and beyond even our current scientific knowledge. Or is it? Despite most experts believing that the treasure ships of Cheng Ho were probably closer to 200 feet in length than the recorded 447 feet, one discovery still gives hope to those who want to believe the gigantic ships were as long as claimed. In 1962, workers on the Yangtze Riverfront found a wooden timber 36 feet long buried beside a massive rudder plate. It was determined that this piece of wood was originally a steering post for a gigantic ship. It was the right size and the right age to be from one of Zheng Ho's treasure vessels. If this is the case, the size of the rudder is the best evidence to support the claim that Zheng He sailed the largest wooden ships ever constructed. Regardless of if his treasure ships were 200 feet or 400 feet long, the scale of Cheng He's fleet still puts the ships of the most famous European explorers to shame and gives a great window into the riches and power of the Ming Dynasty. Taking all of this into account, one conclusion appears to be clear. China had the resources and technology to discover the New World decades before Columbus. If the Ming emperors had had the desire to push the limits of their own frontier, the history of America might have looked entirely different.